All right, let's go right into this. The, the House has to vote again on the bill that they passed yesterday because there were, I think it was two or three provisions that were not bird rule compliant. And specifically, there were a couple provisions in there that did not specifically go to the financial uh, financial difference for the United States uh, government. So the parliamentarian was called to her attention by staffers on uh, Bernie Sanders committee. I think that's the banking committee and widens committee. That's on finance. Uh, and they went to uh, the parliamentarian. This is one of the, the underreported stories of the ACA too, is that at one point uh, Sanders folks went to the parliamentarian and argued to her that the bill was not bird rule compliant. They did it in this instance. All it does is make it uh, a little bit more difficult or embarrassing for the Republicans at this point. But they uh, fixed it. They're going to pass it. And the tax law is going to be uh, law of the land. And look, you know, the uh, people can argue as to whether or not it's going to help the economy to give tax breaks to corporations. You can argue that um, you would have to be arguing that giving these tax breaks and basically giving away money to CEOs and board of directors so that they can buy back their shares. Job creators? Job creators. Uh, the, I mean, understand how this works, right? So they buy back, and, and Dayan took us through this, but they buy back their stocks. CEOs, board of directors, maybe other members of the C-suite they get paid in part in salary and in part in stocks. And they get paid even more so in stocks because they know there's a tax advantage to that for them. Because the stocks, when they cash in their stocks, they're only going to be paying uh, a, a third, or I should say two-thirds uh, taxes as to, from what they would be paying on their salary. So... Uh, these are changes that Bill Lazonic uh, outlined for us uh, over the past couple of years. You can go back into our archives and, and, and listen to any interview that we've done with him because it's um, uh, more than valuable. But then follow the, where this goes. They buy back their stocks. It raises the, the value of their stocks. We've seen a 25% plus jump in the stock market in the past year. Part of this is a function of getting rid of regulations. I mean, if you look at the for-profit universities, if you go and, and, and Google EFT for for-profit universities, you will see that they have actually doubled in value. And that, if you look at the trajectory of when it happens, here's November 7th, 2016. And on November 9th, 2016, their stock starts going up ascends in a way that it would almost be you would to climb that in a physical environment you would need to be an expert mountain climber with pitons and hooks it goes straight up because the enforcement mechanisms that the obama administration was starting to put and clamp down on this basically the scam scam on taxpayers and on students who are stuck with that debt they owe it to the U.S. government. It's all tax dollars. But the, the, the scam, uh, you know, basically the announcement was when Donald Trump became uh, president. Hey, guess what? Um, the power's out in this major city. Well, we're just going to let you know we're pulling all the cops off the beat. And on top of that, uh, we're also opening up all the doors and taking all the merchandise from every place and putting it in the street. And we're not doing any controls on it. So feel free to walk away with it. Nevertheless, the, uh, so what will also happen as the stock market continues to rise, and it will for a while, completely untethered from what the economy is, the, the real world economy, or the economy for the vast majority of people in this country. And remember, only about 10% of Americans have individual stocks. The rest of us, if we have stocks, it's a function of uh, your union has a pension fund or you work for a city and they have a pension fund or your uh, your investment vehicle. It's a it's a large fund. Only 10 percent have individual stocks. 
and the stock market goes up and, and, and it's more often than not a retirement. So you're not it doesn't have the liquidity it does for really wealthy people. So their value, their uh, net worth goes up through the roof. And them buying a house and this and that, the idea that in some way, like the mortgage deduction is going to inhibit uh, the real estate market is, is silly, of course, because we're talking about people with, with so much money that it's a, it's a rounding error. Four percent of the people have a mortgage that's over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so they'll be fine. But what it will do is it will continue to drive up the price of of housing when you have uh, the stock market going this big. It'll drive up the price of everything. So it we're we're seeing basically all the problems that we have associated with wealth inequality will be magnified significantly. That two thousand dollars that uh, the middle class, the average person that they're touting will, will have in terms of uh, uh, tax so-called relief, that of course expires after eight years. All the other provisions for the top one uh, percent who get eighty percent of the benefits, those do not expire. But that two thousand dollars. The the buying power of that two thousand dollars in a couple of years is not going to be is not going to amount to very much. If you have this type of wealth inequality that is being hypercharged, on top of which, of course, you have thirteen million Americans who are going to lose health insurance over the next years. Your premiums are going to go up too because the individual mandate has been uh, dispensed with, and so younger. Healthier people are going to leave risk pools and premiums are going to go up if you're involved in the exchanges, whatnot. So some of your $2,000, if you're getting $2,000, will go towards that over the course of the year. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, because of things like. Because of 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 the way in which they're treating foreign made profits, there is a slight incentive to build more factories overseas rather than the United States. It's complicated, but it basically comes down to if you have a factory and you make a million dollars worth of profits, that is considered considered to be the sort of reasonable amount of profits. I think that's I don't think that's the actual term of art that they use. Reasonable amount of profits. Uh, if you get over that, then they, they there's an increase in the tax rate to repatriate that money. So there's going to be an incentive for people to just keep building more foreign uh, manufacturing outlets so that they can have a reasonable return on all of those investments outside of the United States. Um, I don't think it's going to be uh, dramatic, but if there is any um, if there's any weight to what the tax new tax bill does in terms of returning money to the United States or returning manufacturing to the United States, that's the direction it goes. Here is Paul Ryan, who couldn't be happier, folks, couldn't be happier uh, because this is also the the part of the uh, the one two punch with the Republicans, right? The first punch is we're going to expend all this money and give it to rich people. And then the second part of the punch is, oh, my God, we're broke. We need to cut Social Security and Medicare. The deficit. Now, I know that the theory is that if you have more tax growth, you get more revenues into the coffer, and that reduces the definite, but yeah. deficit. But let me just put a fine point on it. Are you saying that the growth you're going to get from this tax cut will equal the amount it would cost on the deficit side so that it's a wash, so that you're not adding to the deficit at all because of this? Nobody knows the answer to that question because that's in the future. But what we do know is that this will increase economic growth. Here, let me say it this way, Savannah. People are living paycheck to paycheck in this country. More than half of the people are. Now, pause it. Hold on. Before he gets into the, uh, the BS in, without addressing the question. Now, I'll remind you, I don't care terribly about the deficit. I don't think it's a problem at all. Um, but what Savannah Guthrie is doing there is she's saying, like, I know that you have talked about unicorns coming uh, and dancing on all of our heads and, and pooping out ice cream and, um, and non-fattening ice cream. That we can just uh, we can eat and not get fat. I know that you you do, but are you suggesting that that's actually true? 
And uh, Paul Ryan says, well, yeah, it's possible unicorns could come in the future and poop this uh, um, ice cream that's not fattening like we've been talking about for a long time. But it's in the future, so I can't be exactly sure about it. Um, even though we've seen... Long time horizon. We've seen in Kansas what happens when you cut taxes as to whether or not it expands the tax base and creates um, this boon of revenue. And the answer is no. There are no unicorns. Even if there were, they don't poop out ice cream that has no calories. And so Paul Ryan says, actually, Savannah, let me change the topic for a moment, if you will let me. And I'm going to make it sound like I actually care about uh, human beings, as if I was a human being. Living paycheck to paycheck in this country, more than half of the people are in this country. Another group of people in this country are about one check away from living paycheck to paycheck. We have not had a 3% growth economy since before the Great Recession in 2008. What that means is stagnant wages, flat living standards. You have to get faster economic growth so that people can get ahead in America. That's what we're doing. Okay, first off, um, put aside for a moment as to why we haven't had this economic growth and put aside for whether or not it's actually something that we, um, we want going forward when we have something like climate change hanging over our heads. The fact of the matter is that um, we've certainly had years of economic growth that have been uh, at three percent over the past thirty or forty. It, the problem is not that is not the lack of economic growth is not why we have stagnant wages. The reason why we have stagnant wages is because of things like your tax plan, which funnels money that is developed through growth into the hands of fewer and fewer people. That is why we have uh, stagnant wages across the board because the profits that are being increased the 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 money that is being thrown off of increased productivity is going to a fewer and smaller subset of people that is the problem there which of course he avoids talking about and now of course he's denying well we never said there was unicorns we just said future you can't tell maybe there are unicorns in the future so that's paul ryan on on that. Hi folks, Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.